Welcome to Pando.io. Pando is a powerful platform designed to help businesses improve their software products through in-depth user analytics, guided onboarding, and valuable feedback collection. In this video, I'm going to cover the following. So we're going to understand the Pando dashboard, which is right here. We can create a dashboard, and I'm going to teach you how to analyze product usage, create in-app guides, gather and analyzing user feedback, and manage segments and reports. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a clear understanding of how Pando can help you enhance user experiences and drive production adoption. Let's get started. So, understanding the Pando dashboard. Once you log into Pando, you will see there's this dashboard button which you can tap create dashboard so that you can make one. So you can either choose a template or add a widget. I'm just gonna choose a template so that we can have a basic overview of what Pando truly has in stock for us. I'm gonna name this one something basic like hello and then add an event. So let's name this and then just choose something. So I'm just gonna tap on choose widgets and now we can choose a widget for our new dashboard. I'm gonna choose something random like this one and then tap on save and here we are. So right now there's no data available because obviously we haven't added any data to basically input and make our pie charts and our dashboards. So on the left hand side, there's product, people, behavior, NPS, and guides. So let's move on by tapping on product and here we are. So there are four key options under products. There's pages, features, track events, and product areas. You can tap on pages so that you can see all of the current pages that are tagged so that you can view page traffic and understand the behavior of your users. So basically this helps you identify the highest performing features or the underused features and drop off points where users struggle or where they basically just stop. Similarly under features, it's basically the same. You can tag features so that you can see what users click on while navigating through your application. And then there's also track events where you can basically record any actions your users perform along with any properties that describe the action. And last one is the product areas. This is where your products will be, how many pages, features, guides, track types, page views, feature clicks, track events, accounts, and visitors. So under people, there's visitors, accounts, and segments. For visitors, these are basically the key metrics of your visitors for your app or your website. And then for accounts, these are people who have accounts that have visited you. And for segments, here you can create segments based on user roles, account details, or behavior such as users who haven't used a feature in 30 days. So, so basically you can create a segment based on the behavior of that user or the details of that user's account. So now under behavior, there are a lot. So under behavior, there's this create report button where you can either create data explorer, funnel, path, retention, and workflow. So I'm just going to choose data explorer. And basically here you can select events where you can analyze your product and segments using visualizations and reports of your data from one location. I don't really have any events on this account, but basically you're going to want to choose those events and it's going to show charts based on the data over here. It's going to show the charts, the breakdowns, and all the stats you need for your data explorer report. You could also do the same for funnel, path, retention, and workflow, and you can view them all under these ones right here. So tap on data explorer. As you can see, I don't have a report yet on here, but basically these are lists of your reports under these certain types. Data Explorer, Funnels, Paths, Retention, Workflows. So basically, Data Explorer means query usage data to use visualized comparisons, breakdowns, and calculations. Funnels analyze conversion rate across a set of specified steps. Paths analyze actions that users take before or after a specific event. Retention analyze the percentage of users who return to an app or feature. This is really important because you'd want users to come back to your app or your feature because you would basically want them to stay with you and not go to another app. For workflows, 
This analyzes process completion and identify optimal user journeys. For PES or product engagement score, basically, it measures overall product health using three key metrics. Adoption, which is the percentage of features used by active users. As you can see, it says, what percentage of your visitors or accounts use your product effectively? Use your product effectively. And stickiness is basically how often users return to your app or what percentage of your visitors return regularly. And for growth, the increase in active users over time. Does your app have a healthy level of growth? These are the most important components and they make up PES or product engagement score. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your users actually use your features. You're gonna to want to make sure they stay with your features and you're gonna to want to make sure that you grow by gaining more users. But actually you're gonna require Pendo snippet in order to set up product engagement score. I'm pretty sure this is under premium like so. So you would have to upgrade to premium in order to use product engagement. And now under NPS or net promoter score, it's a widely used metric to measure customer loyalty and satisfaction. It basically helps you understand how likely your users are to recommend your product to others. So it measures customer sentiment on a scale of 0 to 10 by asking one simple question. We can select in-app or in-email or in-app plus email. I'm going to select in-app. And there you go. As you can see, like I said, a 0 to 10 metric scale where they say, how likely are you to recommend us or add your company name over here? Like, let's say our company name is hello. And to a friend or coworker or friend or family, choose whatever you want. If they choose 10, that adds to our NPS score. If they choose zero, that basically is a negative score for our NPS. Now, they have to tell us why they gave this rating so that we can read this. Basically, it's pretty much optional. They don't have to say this. They don't have to write down this. But it's going to be very important for us so that we can have a view, an understanding of what our features and apps are missing. So I'm going to type something as a substitute. And here we are at our success message. Basically, it's going to say thank you for your response. Or you could even change this as something random like thanks or whatever kind of text you want after they finish these two questions. Now tap on next. And you can choose which segments can have this NPS survey. So either everyone or a custom segment, or you could use these segments over here. Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, these other ones. If you choose Chrome, it's only going to be available for Chrome users. But if you choose everyone, everyone's going to see that message. So tap on next. And now for schedule. How often should your visitors be surveyed? This is actually up to you. You can make it. 30 days if you want to, or 365, or actually just one time only. When should it start? Add a day. And would you like Pendle to evenly distribute the delivery of this survey? Even distribution allows your team to receive a constant flow of data throughout the 180-day period. So if you press on no, then it's not going to be evenly distributed to your customers. But if you press on yes, it's going to basically distribute your information and it's going to give you information in return so that you can improve your app. So yeah, that's about it for NPS and for guides. Basically, these are the guides, resource centers, and themes for Pendo. So that's pretty much it for this Pendo.io website. I really hope you learned something. So in conclusion, by leveraging these tools that I showed you, you can gain valuable insights drive user adoption, and create a better overall experience for your customers. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments down below if the tutorial worked or if you have any questions. Thank you and goodbye.